1.93 acre vacant property is loca located directly to the south of 1615 South First Avenue. As part of the annexation process, I hope you can hear me okay, I'll keep on moving my mask. As part of the annexation process, the city of uh, Safford must adopt a zoning classification that permits densities and uses not greater than those permitted by the county. Currently, the property is zoned General A land use, which allows one residence with a minimum lot size of one acre. City of Safford AR Agricultural Residential District allows one conventional or manufactured dwelling lot per acre with a minimum lot size of one acre. The AR District allows for densities and uses not greater than those permitted by the county. For zoning ordinance section 17.20.020, the applicant is required to hold a neighborhood meeting on the rezoning prior to going before the Planning and Zoning Commission. A meeting notice along with the rezoning application was mailed to all property owners within 150 feet of the property. The meeting was held on November 10th, uh, 2020 at 6 p.m. at the Safford Annex Building. One member of the public attended the meeting and attached are the minutes from the meeting. You have that as part of your packet. Zoning Ordinance Section 17.20.020D um, states that all amendments to this title shall be made in accordance with the general plan. It is public policy that this title should not be amended unless it can be shown that the change or change changing conditions make the proposed amendment already reason um, make the proposed amendment reasonably necessary to the promotion of the purpose of this title being the zoning ordinance. The purpose of the zoning ordinance is to promote the health, safety, morals, convenience, order, prosperity, and general welfare of the present and future inhabitants of the city by guiding development within the city in accordance with the general plan. Goal number 14 of the general plan, land use and character area element states to support infill land uses, strategies, and programs that enhance Safford's existing neighborhoods and increase the quality of life for Safford residents. Staff is recommending that the Planning and Zoning Commission recommend City Council to rezone Graham County Parcel 101-14-003E from Graham County General A Land Use to City of Safford AR Agricultural Residential District for the following reasons. The zoning classification is the closest zoning classification that permits densities and uses not greater than those permitted by Graham County and the rezone request is in conformance with General Plan Goal Number 14. Is this where I close our uh, regular meeting? So, do we do a vote on that, or can I we just close it and come just, back in? Just close it. Okay, then uh, I would close the regular meeting, and we will hear uh, through those from the public that uh, have any comments, concerns. You got the lectern, please. Thank you. I remember reading something, Susan, about commercial, but also as I read it, I thought that this classification was very similar to what the county had, yeah. and I didn't. Yeah. Yes, you would. I would assume, yeah. Yeah. If if it's rezoned again, they'll have to go through the same process as this okay. again, correct? That's Susan? correct. Do we know anything about uh, what's predicted uh, to go in there, or is it still up for sale? And no, I don't have to know what the county has to say. Okay. I know what I'm talking about. Okay. <laughs> Susan, any? Staff hasn't received any applications for any other, re you know, any other rezoning of the property at this point in time. Yeah, just a question: What's yes. the purpose? What's the purpose of uh, if it can't uh, be any different than? The what the county's requiring, unless they're gonna go commercial, what would be the purpose of even doing it now? It, because that's the requirement of the Arizona revised statutes, that when you annex a piece of property, you have to reply, you know, you annex it into the city's jurisdiction, 
then you have to apply zoning. But to why are we annexing it? Um, at, at the applicant's request. request. Yeah, they're, they're, requ they're No, requesting. I understand they're, so th they want it to help them with the sale, I guess is where I'm going with that. I mean, that's, I'm, I'm wondering if that's the reason that that's the, the fir this is the first step. And the next that step. That was my thought. Yeah, the next step is going to be commercial. In the city? And I don't know. Where they are in the zoning for, for Isn't that close to Curtis Landscape? It's just down there. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's a vacant that's lot right now. Right, right. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank Anyone you. Anyone else wants to speak to the issue? Did you want to speak to the issue? Well, she, she's actually here for a different item. Oh, <laughs> shucks. <laughs> <laughs> we almost got her up here. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's see here. Uh, I guess we will close the... Uh, Closing the public hearing now. We have. Uh, did we need a vote for that? That's so, correct. Yes. Okay. All those in favor of uh, closing the. Yeah, the public hearing. All say aye. 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 Opposed. Aye. Okay. Motion carries. We're back to regular session. Uh, I assume we're on no item number eight now, Susan. I think we're on seven. Are we on we're seven? seven. That's correct. Seven. Yeah, seven. So seven. Okay. Any further discussion? All right, any further discussion on this? Uh, the, we have the one concern, and it's, uh, it seems to be a concern that it would happen supposedly down the road if it was uh, changed or asked for a commercial uh, zoning. Okay. Anyone, any council uh, comments? No? Okay. Yeah, I apologize. I'm new at this job. Well, welcome to my world. <laughs> okay. So uh, at this point, we're we're just approving a rezone to get it into the city of Safford, the closest to. Because it's 0.93, it's not quite an acre. Right. Yes. Right. Yes, that's that's correct, and it also just allows one single family residence. Um, just like the county zoning allows just one single family residence. So if someone wishes to make a recommendation, um, Mr. Vice Chair, they could, they could just, under the staff's recommendation, just say, I recommend that the Planning Zoning Commission recommend City Council, et cetera, et cetera, that last paragraph, if they wanted to read that, if you're recommending in favor. Okay, anyone in favor of this motion going forward? Or if somebody would read that to make the motion. Okay. All right, I guess I'll start. Okay. Um, I recommend that the Planning and Zoning Commission um, approve rezone request Z0720 to rezone Graham County Parcel 101-14-003E from Graham, Graham County General A land use to City of Safford AR Agricultural Residential District. And if you can state for the following reasons, please. That's on page two of two. I'm, I'm thinking that. Oh, for the following reasons that the zoning classification is the closest zoning classification that permits densities and uses not greater than those permitted in Graham County, and the rezone request is conformance with general plan goal number 14. Thank you. Motion by Mr. Patterson. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, motion and Motion and second by Mr. Hancock. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay, that was an aye from John. Thank you, John. We'll keep checking with you, make sure you're there. <laughs> We've got one on the phone. <laughs> All right, so motion carries, and we're good to go. If I can keep up with the agenda here. Okay, are we on eight now, Susan, with the staff presentation? That's correct, yes. Okay. So the next item, if I may proceed. Please. Um, for the next item is to hold the public hearing on a text amendment of Zoning Ordinance Chapter 17.68, Section 17.68.010, 
Summary of zoning regulations pertaining to maximum lot coverage and rear setbacks for single family duplex and multifamily residential properties. The Planning and Zoning Commission will need to provide a recommendation to the City Council on these text amendments along with a statement of the Commission's reasons for the recommendation. Um, during the August 21st, 2020 City Council work session, the City Council dis discussed maximum lot coverage requirements and rear setback requirements for residential properties. The City Council recommended making the maximum lot coverage 50% for all residential districts and asked the Planning and Zoning Commission to, dis to discuss the rear setback requirements and to consider reducing the rear setback requirement from 15 feet to 20 feet. And what you have next in your memo is um, the different districts and which show like for the R110 single family residential district the rear yard setback is 20 feet and maximum lot coverage is 35 percent for the R16 single family residential district the rear setback is 20 feet maximum lot coverage is 40 percent for the R2A duplex residential district the rear yard setback is 20 feet maximum lot coverage is 50 percent the R2 multiple family residential zoning district, the rear yard setback is 20 feet and the maximum lot coverage is 50%. The AR agricultural residential district, the rear yard setback is 20 feet, maximum lot coverage is 40%. The CMH conventional manufactured home zoning district, the rear yard setback is 20 feet and the maximum lot coverage is 40%. And the manufactured home development zoning district, the rear yard setback is 15 feet and the maximum lot coverage is 40%. So again, the zoning ordinance section 17.20.020D states that all amendments to this title shall be made in accordance with the general plan. And the purpose of the zoning ordinance is to promote the health, safety, morals, convenience, order, prosperity, and general welfare um, of the present and future inhabitants of the city by guiding development within the city in accordance with the general plan. And goal number one of the Safford neighborhood character area, the general plan states to support infill land use strategies programs that enhance Safford's existing neighborhoods and increase the quality of life of Safford's residents. Goal number seven of the citywide land use goals and policies of the general plan states to ensure that zoning and subdivision ordinances reflect the specific needs of each growth area and character area within the Safford planning area and implement this general plan. Staff is recommending as per city council direction to increase the maximum lot coverage to 50% for the above districts. Staff is not recommending reducing the rear yard setback from 20 feet to 15 feet. Having a rear yard setback of 15 feet reduces the amount of private open area, especially for smaller lots. This reduction also makes the addition of a shed or other type of storage or accessory building difficult for the following reasons. The zoning ordinance requires a minimum 10 foot separation between an accessory building exceeding 120 square feet in the main building. In addition, the zoning ordinance allows storage sheds 200 square feet or less in size to be placed within three feet of the rear property line and, with, and within one foot of the rear property line when there is an alley. I did, in this particular one, provide a suggested motion um, to help the Planning and Zoning Commission. So um, you have that before you. Again, this is a request that came from City Council. I do have a tape measure. And I could set up some chairs if you want to see what 15 feet and 20 feet look like. If you wish me to do that, I'd be more than happy to do that. Well, we know what six feet looks like. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, We're pretty used to six <laughs> feet nowadays. <laughs> uh, I'm fine unless someone else would like to I don't to need to see a visual. Could, could you just real quickly explain the 50% the maximum lot coverage of uh, exactly what's involved in that? Sure, so the maximum lot coverage basically is you take a piece of property and any structures on the property, anything that has a roof is considered right. a structure. So okay. it could be, you know, um, it could be the main house, it could be a garage, it could be an accessory structure, it could even be like a covered ramada as long as it's a solid roof on it, that's counted too. And so the square footage of all of those types of buildings on a piece of property are looked at and calculated and given our current code then we reference the percentage maximum percentage of how much of a lot can be covered so if you have um, R10 a 10,000 square foot we we'll use R10 as an example R10 is a, is a 10,000 square foot lot so basically on a 10,000 square foot lot 
you can only cover 3,500 square feet of that property with this 35% figure. If it were 50%, you could cover that property with buildings and accessory structures up to 5,000 square feet. Some of the research I did on smaller lots, and this is part of my council presentation, was that um, on smaller lots, when you took into account the side yard setbacks and the front and rear, front and rear are 20 and side yard is 7, and it's 15 if it's a corner, corner lot, um, on so some of the smaller lots, you're, that just the setback requirements alone, you're at about 50% already. So staff really doesn't have any issue with um, changing some of those smaller lot figures to 50%. But staff did have, you know, um, did not recommend reducing the rear yard setback from 15 to, from 20 to 15 feet. Yeah. And, uh, just my, my, my question was, if, and you answered it was like if you had a barn or something that had a, a some type of structure with the, the roof. roof. Roof, yeah, that counts. Yes, so, okay. that's correct, yes. Okay, Susan, thank you for the uh, suggested motions. It gets a little uh, blurry sometimes. But, uh, do we have any public comments on this issue? You probably want to close the regular meeting and, and open the public hearing. Okay. We will uh, take a vote and close the public hearing. All those in favor of closing the public hearing, say aye. 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 Okay. Did you get that? Aye for me. Thank you, John. Done. All right. So close, and we will now... Yes. I'm lost over here. So we're on number uh, nine. Nine point one. So yeah, nine nine. So the, it would be close the regular meeting and open the public hearing is the first thing you need yeah, to do. Yeah, the nine point one. Okay. So uh, any pu any public comments then on this issue? No one wants to talk to us. I guess that's good. <laughs> Okay, so we'll close that and go back into, uh, yeah. 9.2. Yeah, 9.2. We'll close the public hearing and enter into the regular session again. And take a vote. Yes, okay. All right. Um, all those in favor of closing the public hearing and entering back into regular session, say by aye. 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 And John votes aye. Okay. So we're now back in uh, regular session. Okay. I've got a question. Yeah. Or questions. Um, just questions about. So you 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 mentioned that with the setbacks requirements and everything that is already in um, in writing that people are most are already at the fifty percent number anyways. In the on the smaller lots. Yeah, on, on like you know the the R110 is minimum lot size of 10,000 square feet. The R16, the minimum lot size is 6,000 square feet. So on those smaller lots, on the 6,000 square foot lots, once you um, take it to all the will, setbacks, will building more permanent structures affect like rainwater runoff? and such where it used to be soaking into the ground now we're building a house and more concrete where would will that is a system set to handle more storm runoff if there was more impermeable objects on a on a lot that, that actually was brought up at the city council meeting um, lance henry the public works director spoke to that and so one of the things that happens with new subdivisions is that's taken into account when they're figuring out their stormwater systems as far as existing subdivisions that's not necessarily the case and we have some existing older subdivisions that have no stormwater capacity what as it exists now so certainly it can have an impact I think the impact would be minimal given the percentages of increase. Um, so it, it can have an impact, yes, but I think it would be minimal. Okay, do we need to read 10 or do we just need to discuss and decide what we're going to do with 10? Um, as, as far as... Is it ready for action? It can be. It's it's up to if anybody else has any additional yeah. questions. Yeah. Some someone can make a motion. I put a suggested motion there. I do want to note that yeah. that suggested motion does not include the reduction in the rear yard setback. And so, I, I like that. I mean, I don't think we need to 
yeah. to, to change the setbacks yeah. on, on no. those lot sizes. I, 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 I agree with you. Yeah, I don't, I don't, yeah. I like the, uh, I, my question was just about this. I mean, if, if we're setting it up for, for later down the road that it's, it's not going to be, but if the, if the new subdivisions get that taken into no. account, that, that answers my concern. And the only concern. thing I would say is I'm, I'm a little bit surprised that the city council will want us to do that on the, the 15 feet. And, and I am, uh, Mr. Vice Chair, I just, I do think it's important that in the minutes, uh, they do go to city council. So if um, the Planning and Zoning Commission has some concerns about reducing the setback from 20 feet to 15 feet, um, it would be helpful if they express those concerns because the council will get the minutes when this moves on to go to city council. Concerns? I, I just like think the concerns. That, the, the valid concerns that you've stated yes. in not being able to add an accessory building. I mean, by, by that, I think at that point, there'll be a lot more upset people who can't add something who have been on a piece of property yeah. um, by changing that now that I just don't think that that's, I just don't think that's something that I'm comfortable getting in, um, yeah, putting into the, to, into the ordinance. Really crowded. <laughs> yeah. I mean, don't have a lot of room. I agree with Mr. Patterson. I, th I think we're all in agreement. It, do you want to have John if he wants to weigh in at all on that issue? John, do you have any uh, concerns or? No, I'm good with I'm good with, it. So with the, what you guys are saying. Uh, right. I agree with. It. All right, thank you, sir. All right, we've had the discussion. I guess we're looking for a motion. So move. Okay, Mr. Hancock moves. Can someone? At, oh, I, Apologize, Mr. Vice Chair. Can someone read the actual read the motion? I, that's and there's that a suggested the motion two, for approval. I, I got it here. Got it. Okay. I move the Planning and Zoning Commission recommend that City Council approve a text amendment increasing the maximum lot coverage to 50 percent for the R110, R16, AR, C, MH, and MHD zoning districts, citing general plan goal number one and goal number seven and that we're not in favor of the 15-foot request as okay. discussed. As uh, discussed, okay. I, I don't know how else to work. I liked, your, I liked your language. If we could put that in my motion, I'm fine. Okay. I, I second. Motion by Mr. Hancock, second by Mr. Patterson. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Okay. I'm and John's and I also, so unanimous. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, now we're to 11, right? May I proceed? Yes, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. City Council meeting. <laughs> yes. Should have set up a door collection on five dollars a head. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I can't believe they gave us this over them. Yeah, I can't either. Yeah. I thought we'd be meeting behind the building. Yes. Yes. Okay, Susan, I think you're on. Sure. Uh, and and just to address that comment, this this had been advertised weeks ahead of time, and so this other meeting came up at very short notice. <laughs> So. We're kind of important anyway, aren't we? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sure. Um, so this next action is to hold a public hearing on the text amendment of zoning ordinance chapter 17.24 zoning districts designated section 17.40.020, 17.44.020, and 17.46.020 permitted uses pertaining to the age of manufactured homes allowed to be placed within the city of Safford city limits or moved from one location to another location within the city of Safford. The Planning and Zoning Commission will need to provide a recommendation to the City Council on these text amendments, along with a statement of the Commission's reasons for the recommendation. During the August 21, 2020 City Council work session, the City Council discussed having an age limitation for manufactured homes being placed within the city limits. A manufactured home is a single or multiple dwelling manufactured after June 15, 1976, in a factory to standards established by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. A mobile home is a single dwelling manufactured 
uh, prior to June 15, 1976. The City of Stafford does not allow a mobile home to be placed within the city limits. Additionally, an existing non-conforming mobile home would not be allowed to be moved from one location within the city limits to another location within the city limits. And so I have manufactured homes um, where they are currently allowed, and that is in the um, AR Agricultural Residential District, the CMH Conventional Manufactured Home District, the MHD Manufactured Home Development District. The City of Safford requires a zoning compliance permit along with a plot plan showing the placement of a manufactured home and the required setbacks. Graham County provides the placement permit, inspections on the actual placement of the manufactured home on a given lot or parcel. Staff research other Arizona jurisdictions to see if age limitations were applied in other areas of the state. And you have a table that is part of your packet. I do want to point out that the town of Camp Verde um, upon further research that they actually have a date of 1985. But the other jurisdictions that we researched um, use the 1976 date. Um, uh, the, the Stafford City Attorney Bill Sims forwarded me the attached um, State of Arizona Department of Housing letter that was sent to the town of Camp Verde while the town was considering adopting an age um, restriction. The town of Camp Verde said an official showed up at the hearing letting them know that they could not proceed with the age limitation, though they do now have an age limitation of 1985. Um, so you have that letter as part of your packet. Um, and I think what, what needs to happen next is a couple things. One, um, does the Planning and Zoning Commission want to add an age restriction? If so, what that age restriction is, and also which districts to apply it to. So earlier I mentioned three districts, and on your zoning map that you have on your desk, um, the dark green is the uh, C-MH Conventional Manufactured Home District. Um, there's the Manufactured Home Development District, and, and the light, very light blue is the AR Agricultural Residential District. Uh, the Manufactured Home Development District, if I can refer to my zoning ordinance here, generally um, is mobile home parks, manufactured home parks, and then Stone Willow, which was a subdivision that was made specifically to allow manufactured homes within it. Staff would recommend that if you um, decide to do an age limitation, to not have it apply to the, um, to the manufactured mobile home parks. There's two in town. Uh, one is off of 8th Avenue and the other one is Lexington Pines. I think it best um, be that to let those two areas, those type of mobile home manufactured home parks to regulate themselves as far as the age limitations they may have. Um, Staff would recommend that if you apply an age that you apply it to the AR Agricultural Residential District and to the C-MH Conventional Manufactured Home District. Uh, I spoke to the city attorney today. We were having email conversations back and forth. Um, he recommended that you consider the 1985 date. He thought anything less than that, or I, perhaps more than that, however you look at it. Like yeah. it, 10 years was discussed. He thought that was too restrictive. Um, according to the letter from the State of Arizona Department of Housing, yeah. could this be subject to a legal challenge? Perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever, whatever the age limitation is. So anybody can put an age limitation on, and then it just takes a legal challenge and to go through the court system to see whether or not that would be legal or not. So uh, he felt comfortable with 1985. Um, you have some of the examples as part of your packet. Again, most places use a 1976 um, standard. Um, Yuma has a 1985 one. Uh, Camp Verde has 1985. Um, Benson had 10 years, but it was repealed, so it may have been legally challenged. I don't know yeah. the full story behind what happened in Benson. And then Bullhead City says it, has, uh, it must not be manufactured more than two years prior to the year the permit is requested. I don't know if that has been subject to a legal challenge or not. So it's really up to the Planning and Zoning Commission to make a recommendation on which districts and then what age limitation you would like to apply or to one manufacture. at all, right? Oh, or do you want to apply one at all? Exactly. 
And with that, I would suggest um, to um, open the public hearing, see if there's any public comments, close the public hearing, and then we could have further discussion. Okay. We'll go ahead and uh, open the public hearing then. Any though, anyone that would like to speak to this issue? Okay, I guess not. So we will close that, go back into regular. My, I'm getting completely lost here. It's okay. Okay. And take, and take a vote. Yeah, you can close the public yeah. hearing and okay. take a vote. Uh, all those in favor of going back into regular session and closing the uh, public hearing, say aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, John. All right. So we're back in regular session now. But was there a re where did we get to this point? Was it because of the one going in uh, down on 8th and everyone was concerned about uh, trailers or? That's correct. Okay. That, that started it. So on 8th yeah. Street. Yeah, on There's 8th a manufactured Street. home that was placed on 8th Street, and that started people being very, very concerned, including that because the Planning and Zoning Commission discussed it also, yeah, yeah. and the City Council, um, that we should consider putting an age limitation. The one on 8th Street, I think, is a 1983 yeah. manufactured home, um, so it, it did meet housing and urban development standards um, that are required since 1976. Um, that manufactured home also was remodeled, and it was overseen by um, basically Graham County, because Graham County oversees though those um, placements and remodeling. I know at one point they had replaced some windows, and they didn't bring them up to current standards, and they had to remove those windows and then get newer windows for it. Um, so Graham County oversees both the placement of the manufactured homes and any remodeling that might happen to them. After reading the uh, letter from the state, it it seemed like whatever you did, you could be wrong. And uh, yeah, well, in the line in the letter that that really sticks with me is HUD regulations and standards preempt any state or local laws that yeah. conflict yeah. with HUD. So why have a law? <laughs> so they're pretty much telling you whatever you do, we're going to come in yeah. and and, and um, overturn it. But it does make me feel a little bit more comfortable that the city attorney was okay, felt okay with a 1985 date. I mean, after reading yeah. this, I was really concerned about a date at all. Yes. Because of, I mean, I mean, if we vote for it and did the city get sued, I mean, I'm not comfortable with that. But if the city attorney was okay with a 1985 date, that makes me a little bit more comfortable with maybe that date. And, and coming in, I looked at it and felt like... Uh, you look at the city of Mesa, Payson, uh, Tempe, Tucson, well, 76, and so I was going to be comfortable with going with 76. Which is the which is what we're at now, correct? That's correct. Yes. Yeah, I was just, but, but we don't have it listed. No, that's the standard we have now because a yes. manufactured home is defined as one that is manufactured after June 15, 1976. Right. So, so that's the definition of a manufactured yeah. home as opposed to a mobile home. Which the city doesn't currently allow. Mobile that's homes. correct. Anything right. older than that. That's okay. correct. Um, and then also if you choose to want to do a date, a time period, I think um, it may be easier to say, you know, manufactured homes that would to not allow manufactured homes that are older than, let's say, 35 years. So that instead of having 1985 be the date, it doesn't move with the time as time yeah. moves. Right. So, so it's always 35 years from the date. Be, it could be 30. It could be 35. Um, I, the city attorney certainly um, originally was thrown out as 10 years, and the city attorney thought that was too restrictive. So it could be. Well, and, and you go back to, and I believe this was at the city council meeting that that I actually was sworn into this commission where one of the council members brought up, you can own a car that's from 1965 that looks better than my 2010, yeah. um, you know, yeah. car I'm dri driving. And it's the same with, with those. Exactly. I mean, it's, it's really how well they're taken care of. Exactly. Um, that, because this seems, the, the one that seems to start this whole thing was an aesthetic issue yeah. more than anything else, in yeah. my opinion. So yeah. I'm, I, I mean, I'm okay keeping it the way it is. Um, I'm also okay with if the city attorney feels 1985 is an okay date, um, just depending on how everybody else feels. I feel the same way. And I would, and I. Well, uh, you do, I, got, I got a question. I don't, John? I don't remember. Lee, I don't think you were there yet, but one of my concerns, that was one of my concerns when I first saw that trade put it on there, 
if you think back about the, the land usage, that's going to be over 50 percent of that lot. And I don't know where, where we figured out a setback or the slide on setbacks. I don't, I don't know. It's punching it kind of close, I would think. But Can you it's hear always there. So. Yeah. He's asking about the coverage of that lot with that one being a small lot. If oh, that was think. pushing the lot coverage. It, it meets the max, it, it, it falls below the maximum lot coverage and it meets the setbacks. That particular one that was done on 8th Street. I don't have the exact number of what the lot coverage was. It may be around 40% uh, or I know, it, I know it meets the required setbacks. I did have the permit for that. I still Can may have Can you hear it. that, John? Yeah, I'm looking at Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Just one, one other thought that I had was Whatever we do, I, I think if things are in place right now, and in a sense we, uh, for lack of a better way to explain it, we grandfather what's there now. But anything new or additional that would be added to property would follow whatever we approve tonight and the city council approves. Uh, and that way we'd, uh, if somebody had a nice home that was older than the 85, yeah. A manufactured home and they've taken good care of it and they're in a good spot we're not going to go bother them uh, they'd be grandfathered in uh, but anybody new wanting to do that they would have to meet the new guidelines is that does that make sense or not yes that's that's correct and basically anything that's already here is grandfathered be, in okay. instead to um so an, to answer the question about the one on 8th avenue the actual lot coverage of that particular um, site of the manufactured home is 25% and it could go up to 40% but it actually is 25% okay. so it's interesting that lot coverage sometimes you think it's a lot more than it actually is yeah. it looks like it <laughs> yes oh you you gave us a lot of information Susan on how to do this I'm not I don't see so in your recommendation um, it those are You, you have, I'm trying to look at my map and read your recommendation at the same time. Uh, zoning district designated permitted use to whether the age of manufacturing homes be limited. So if we, if our recommendation was to have a 35 year minimum, you suggest that we make that pertainable to AR and CMH conventional? Yeah, so on the, um, the staff recommendation is I, I would not do it to the MHD district, right? So it would just apply to the AR and the C-MH district. And then whatever year, you know, you, you limit, limit manufactured homes to be in no older than 30 years or whatever the number is that you wish to do. And I can, I can help you kind of get through the motion. For yeah, I was thinking be. I'm glad I wouldn't have to make this motion. Well, and, and I'm okay making the motion as long as I understand. So the section 17, 40020, 44020, and 46020, are those, are, do, are those in a tied to these districts just in the code form? Is that what I'm looking at? Yeah, so the section 17 in that staff recommendation area, mm -hmm. is that what you're looking at? Yes. So section 17.40.020 is the AR Agricultural Residential District. 17.44 uh, is the C-MH Conventional Manufactured Home District. And then the 17.46 is the Manufactured Home Development District that includes mobile home parks and manufactured home okay. parks. And so it was the 17.46 that staff was recommending that you not include. Perfect. I just wanted to make sure if we made a recommendation, we didn't accidentally read. Because I'm, I'm okay with that, too. I'd like, yeah. those are private companies that can regulate them themselves on the age of who they let into their parks. Yes, what it looks like and all that. Right. They can do that on their own. We don't need to do that for them. I don't I, feel. I agree. Okay. Everyone had their say? Do we have, do we have a year? I mean, is 30? What, so what would be 85? I can't math real fast. That's 35. Is that 35 years? That's Yeah, that's 35. From this year? 20 and 15. Right. Yeah. 35? Is it? You like that number? That. If you feel comfortable what is, with yes. the attorney's what recommendation. Is, this, what is the, that's the, the, you got a comment on that? I, 
Not really. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, because I, I don't know, those regulations, when they picked 1985, they might have done that 10 years ago or 15 years ago. So, again, you know, it's... And, and, it's and there's what, still the chance that if we do put any number on it, the state's going to come back and say, no, you're not. Yeah, yeah. So, and, and city council may change it, too. So, right. you know, whatever your pleasure of whatever year, I think 10 is too restrictive, 20 might be too restrictive, 30 might be reasonable. If you want to do 35, it's certainly up to the commission on, on okay. what that number is that you wish and, to you use. Know, and there may be someone on the city council and the city manager and staff that would would feel stronger. Uh, right now, I I kind of have mixed feelings about doing anything on that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This doesn't bring strong feelings to me one way or the other. Yeah. And, that, and, the, really and the, the reason is because of the letter that follows this that HUD's going to do what they want to anyway. Yeah. So that's kind of where I'm at. But I want to follow the recommendations too. So. All right. What's the pleasure of the commission? I just, I just feel, I mean, coming into the meeting after reading this, I was ready to say, let's not put a date on it. Let's leave it the way it is. Um, because I didn't feel that me personally as a member of this commission would like to set the city of Safford up for an impending uh, well, legal so, action. Yeah. Um, but with the blessing of the city attorney thinking 35 years, okay. he could, he could be okay with that. I'm okay with 35 years. Okay, do we need to put that in the form of a motion? I can put it into a motion. Good, because I'm thinking I wouldn't. I couldn't. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm going to just try to put it into the recommendation here. I, uh, I motion that the Planning and Zoning Commission make a recommendation to the City Council regarding Zoning Ordinance Chapter 17.24, Zoning Districts Designated Section 17.40.020 and 17.44.020 permitted uses pertaining to whether the age of the manufactured homes shall be limited to 35 years from the current date. Motion by Mr. Patterson. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Okay, motion is seconded by Mr. Hancock. All right, any discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Aye. All right, that was an aye, thank you, John. All right, motion carries. Jeez. <laughs> Can we get overtime or? <laughs> <laughs> so you wanted to be on the Planning and Zoning Commission. <laughs> no, my wife uh, looking for me a job. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. Where are we, Susan? 13? Or? Yeah, I don't know how you're keeping track. Uh, oh, 14. Really 14? Well, that's even better. Okay, staff presentation. Um, so this next item is to hold a public hearing on a text amendment of the following zoning ordinance chapters, chapter 1728 R10, single family residential, chapter 17.40 AR, agricultural residential, Chapter 17.44 C-MH Conventional Manufactured Home and Chapter 17.46 MHD Manufactured Home Development. The Planning and Zoning Commission will need to provide a recommendation to the City Council on these text amendments along with a statement for the Commission's reasons for the recommendation. Uh, Lachey Bruckner had approached City Council to request that pot belly pigs be allowed within the City of Safford. Currently, the City of uh, Safford Code of Ordinances does not allow live swine or pigs um, with, within the city, with the exception of in the AR Agricultural Residential District when part of a youth project. The City Council directed staff to bring this issue to the Planning and Zoning Commission for discussion. At the October 19, 2020 Planning and Zoning Commission meeting, the Commission heard a presentation by Lachey Bruckner and directed staff to draft a text amendment to allow pot belly pigs within the city limits, provided they are limited to two and that they have to be spayed or neutered. Uh, licensing was also discussed. The Shea Bruckner um, completed a text amendment application on October 21st, requesting that pot belly pigs be allowed in the city of Safford as a customary household pet. 
The dog licensing section of the SAFRI Code of Ordinances does not fall under the Planning and Zoning Commission review, but the Commission can make a recommendation that in addition to this text amendment, the City Council consider amending Title VI of the Code of Ordinances to require owners of pot belly pigs to have a license similar to those licensed for dogs. Um, and you have some code references. Um, one is um, Title VI animals that um, it is unlawful to keep any live swine or pigs in the city. That was first addressed in 1901 um, under Chapter 6.08, dogs. Um, if there's a license required, so those two um, Title VI items would be a separate um, text amendment if you wish to allow pot belly pigs in, in the city, and it's not, it's not something that comes before the Planning and Zoning Commission. So the um, following are the text amendments for the Planning and Zoning Commission to consider recommending the City Council. The additions are in capital letters and in red. And so one of the things for the Planning and Zoning Commission to consider is, do you want to allow pot belly pigs within the city? And if so, where would you, where would you want to allow those? Um, the first one is R110, Single Family Residential District, and it shows the actual language that would be changed under permitted uses. Um, I do want to note that the R110 district also by reference includes the R16 district, the R2A duplex residential district, and the R2 multifamily residential district. So those are kind of all lumped together under the R110. And then you have chapter 17.40, the agricultural residential district. And there in red would be the text amendment to that chapter, should you want to move forward with it. And then you have chapter 17.44, the C-MH conventional manufactured home district, and what those changes would be for that district. And then chapter 17.46, um, manufactured home development district, similar to what we just discussed um, in the age of the manufactured homes. These. The MHD districts tend to be mobile home, manufactured home parks, and then manufactured home subdivisions. Um, again, we have the general plan references. And staff is recommending again that if the Planning Zoning Commission chooses to allow Vietnamese pot belly pigs, that they be limited to certain districts. Um, there is a, a, a suggested motion. And um, I do want to point out with the applicant's situation, the applicant's property um, is currently on um, 8th Avenue and is zoned uh, C2 Highway Commercial. And the applicant, I can zoom in here on this map on the wall here. Um, so just below the I-1 that's on the top, it's just a few lots down is where this particular applicant's lot is located. So in the red color or in the pink color? Yes, okay. yes. So that's the C2 Highway Commercial District. So um, if the applicant, if this, if Planning and Zoning Commission makes a recommendation to City Council and City Council approves it, it's only for residential districts, and the applicant would need to rezone their, their property and go through the public process of rezoning their property. Um, and the applicant is aware of that. The applicant's here, too, if you have any yeah. questions for the applicant. Um, also, it would be the staff's recommendation that um, the nearest zoning to that applicant's property is the C-MH Conventional Manufactured Home District. So if you're going to limit it to certain districts, I would recommend that, uh, that you actually include at least that C-MH district. So that would allow the applicant to, um, should City that. Council pass it, it would allow the applicant to rezone their property and they are directly adjacent to C-MH conventional manufactured home district. I know that's a lot of information and can be very confusing. Oh, and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Holy cow. <laughs> Hey, don't do that. You're, you're holding me up down there. Yeah, I appreciate it. <laughs> okay, questions, discussions. Are we about ready to uh, close the public hearing? Wait. I mean, I'm sorry, the regular meeting and uh, yeah, let's let her discuss. All right, we will close the regular meeting and open the public hearing. Aha, she gets to speak. <laughs> <laughs> Your turn. Hello. Uh, 
like she said, my name is Lachey Bruckner, and I am trying to work on getting uh, my pot belly pigs is part of pets. Um, I'm not sure if you all seen, I did quite a bit of report showing how pot belly pigs are not only designed, but how they're uh, sold as pets and how the whole history of them here in America has been designed as a pet and nothing else. So we'd like to, you know, see them as our pets. And uh, I loved how on here they do have limitations and stuff as far as how many you can have and stuff because I know with it being a herd animal, people try to get a lot. Um, but I do agree that uh, more than one is always best, kind of like a dog. A lot of times they have someone else to entertain with rather than just themselves. But then you don't want to have too many of them. I, I definitely like that. Uh, I also agree with the spader neutering because I believe that helps a lot with an animal's mentality and what they're looking for and stuff. I know both of mine are neutered and they're just the sweetest pets that, you know, they're very loving, very entertaining, um, no different than any other household pet. Um, so they don't really have any kind of like wild animal type of mentalities or um, it's definitely just like a, a pet animal. So um, that's one of the reasons why I'm trying to make sure that not only for my pets, but anyone that has a pot belly pig understands everything because just like any pet, there's certain recommendations on how they need to be taken care of. And the more knowledge that we have as far as them being a pet, then the more knowledge we can have on how to take care of them as a pet. Um, that way, a lot of misnomers, one of the main reasons I have them is for pig education, because a lot of people get a pig or have heard about pigs, and then they don't realize all the details that go in with taking care of the pet. Like, uh, unlike a dog, uh, a pig's food can't be wet, dry food. You have to add water to their food. That's just a little health thing that most people don't realize, but I think can come with education, partially being, if they're known as a pet, we can educate as a pet. Okay. Question for Jennifer. Do you need her name and address? I have it on the application. Do, okay. <laughs> I wasn't sure she uh, uh, submitted it there. Question for you. Yes. What little research I've done on them, it seems like these uh, little pigs come in all various sizes. Do you have a comment on what should be, what shouldn't be, or just if they're... Um, I do. A lot of um, pot belly pigs, because of the concept, um, you know, growing up, you eat like a pig. There's a big misnomer on how much pigs are supposed to eat. So a lot of times their weight is based off overfeeding. So I think that actually becomes a health issue. Um, a pot belly pig does weigh anywhere from one to 200 pounds. Um, some a little smaller, um, rarely some of them are a little bigger than that, and usually it's due to an obesity issue. So I do wanna bring that up that they're, um, mine are about 150 pounds, um, give or take a few, but they, um, 200 pounds is normal for a healthy pot belly pig. Anything, too over that, then yes, they, it can be a health issue. So I do want to make sure that people are aware of that. Um, and then I also want to be aware that there's no such thing as a 50 pound pig. Um, because people will also underfeed their pigs thinking that they are teacup and they're going to stay the size of a small dog. So that's where a lot of my education comes in. I do want people to realize that they will be from one to 200 pounds, but they don't really exceed that. And Weight, again, in my report, I'm not sure if you've seen it, I'm going to kind of show. Most of their height still stays here. Just because their weight yeah. broader is broader, um, the weight can fluctuate even because a 100-pound dog can sit here and the 150-pound pig can sit here. Um, so size-wise, they're no different than the fluctuation of dogs. Um, and a lot of their overweight issues is usually due to a health issue. So that is something I would like to keep in mind that people are aware of so we don't have unhealthy pets. Okay, thank you. Questions, gentlemen? Concerns? Uh, just a couple of one question. As Vietnamese pot-bellied, are they the only ones that... Is there any other I, country or <laughs> is that something that... Well, uh, we are specifically saying just these, is there other? Um, there are a few others. Um, I have a report 
I'm not sure if they still have theirs. I have mine that kind of have, um, I have a scale on kind of small pigs and how their size kind of goes because there is one that's a slightly above a pot belly pig, the Vietnamese, which is called a coon coon. Um, and I would say it runs about the, real similar, but maybe about a 250 pound, slightly different. Um, they usually tend to have more hair, a little bit of a different nose shape, but they are very close and similar within the, uh, similar to these kind of pigs, uh, but again, a little different. Um, and this is one of the reasons why with education, I wanna make sure people know the difference. Uh, Vietnamese, strictly, um, I'm not sure about the coon coon pig. Uh, most, you don't see most of those. Um, at least within our area, I've heard some of them being back east, more of like a colder style pig. Um, the Vietnamese potbelly pig didn't arrive in America uh, specifically until the 1980s to 1990s. So they're a very newer style pig versus, because um, a lot of people try to say like Cavalina and stuff, but that's, they are similar size and constructive styled pigs, but again, they're more of a wild animal. They're they're bred different and things like that. The pot belly pig has strictly been bred to be a pet and a household companion. Okay, thank you. Questions, concerns, comments? Anyone else that would like to speak to the issue? All right, thank you so much. I guess it's time to uh, close the public hearing. Uh, we're, we're gonna need a vote on that. Mm -hmm. Question, Susan? Um, <clears throat> yes, I do. I'm going to look to see if I have a chart. I had a chart here. I did some, um, let's see. Let me find this chart, see if I can pull it up. Um, as far as my research on, um, did we do a table on that? Was it a table or, or were you just going off of this? We were just going off of that. Okay, all right, so I, I'm gonna go through this. This is from a private website um, that went state by state. Uh, first, I wanna say that there are um, it's 14 different categories of pigs that are the smaller type of pig than whatever the species is that is typical farm pig, you know, that's used for production of pork and meat. And, and so, um, from this site, and I had um, Jennifer do calling around to do some research because this was a private site. I didn't know how accurate some of the information is. But just to let you know, so Vietnamese pot belly pigs is a particular type of pig. And the, like the other one that she mentioned does exist, and there's 14 other different, or 12 other different species. And so I think it's um, prudent to limit it, if you're going to prove it, to limit it to the v Vietnamese pot belly pigs. But these are some of the jurisdictions listed by this private website. So um, you have Cool Ridge, you have Flagstaff allows two, Gilbert two, um, Glendale, Goodyear, um, that says not to exceed 100 pounds, Mesa. I, I came across allowing two is a pretty common thing. Also that they be spay and neutered was pretty common. And then some jurisdictions, um, would require them to be licensed similar to you would license a dog. So Queen Creek, Tempe, Tucson allows to, Wilcox allows to, and Yuma, um, they say no more than three. So as you can see here, these are some of the other jurisdictions within Arizona that allow um, pot belly pigs to be kept as a household pet, basically. So I just wanted to, sh to show you that information. <coughs> Thank you. Okay, if there's no more uh, public input or council input, uh, let's go back, let's take a vote to go back into uh, regular session. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. All right, we're back in regular session. Okay. I'm... This, this topic, I'm, I'm more torn on this topic than I have been on any other topic tonight. Um, I, I do like the recommendation of two, um, and, I, and the, the comments that Ms. Bruckner made about them being together, I, I understand that, and, I, and I, I would agree with that. Spade and neutered, 
makes sense yeah. to me. I like the recommendation on that. The thing that I'm torn about is where we allow them, if we allow them. Um, I, I do think we should limit them to certain areas. Um, the A, the, the looking at the map that we were provided and looking at the R10 is a huge amount of sapling. I mean, the blue, mm -hmm. the, the, that's the majority of Safford. And those, some of those lots, I mean, I know there's a minimum lot size, but we have always got, we've got R6 in there as well. I'm not sure those lot sizes are set up to house um, big pigs, pot belly, sorry, Vietnamese pot belly pigs. Um, so that concerns me a little bit. Um, I don't know. Okay. Just thoughts. Mr. Hancock. Well, I uh, for a long time had uh, English Bulldogs, and they're about like hot bellied pigs in a lot of ways. Uh, not quite that big. I, I noticed on the uh, information that was shared with us a minute ago, they mentioned 100 pounds and 125 pounds. And, which is below what you were uh, talking about. Uh, I think one thing that would be helpful to me if I had seen, uh, and, and I, I'm all for having pets, and I know how attached I am to my, I have Australian Shepherd now, but I did have the Bulldogs and loved them just like this part of the family. So I, I appreciate that. But uh, I think if uh, at the city council or, or if we had seen what they look like and the environment, what they're like in the environment they're in and, and what, how do they, how do you function with them and, and that type of thing. I, I think that could have be something for down the road. I don't think we need to uh, uh, hold off on making decisions or anything because of that, but I just think rather than trying to explain it, if we saw what was uh, proven or trying to approve, that would be helpful to me. But. Uh, I, I can understand where he's coming from too, yeah. but uh, but I still feel like if they're pets and if they're like other animals and and uh, they're not a problem to the neighbors, uh, I wouldn't be opposed to allowing them to some degree. I'll just leave it at that. What, what do you feel about the registration, registering them like like I, dogs, so we at least the city at least knows where they're at? I would definitely approve that. Phil, that that's important. I, th I think they should be. With chips or, or whatever, just like you do it, uh, uh, and have the registration on an annual basis. I, I think we have a additional. Here, go ahead. I was gonna say, um, at any time, because I know seeing an animal in its environment means a lot. Um, I at any time, and uh, if you guys are wanting to come and see my pigs and see how their environment is, what I do to take care of them. Um, I am more open to anybody coming by at any time. That's why I said this is part of education. I want people to know how to take care of these animals. Um, even if someone, say, was new and thinking about getting a pot belly pig, I would want to give them every bit that I can. Again, they can come by and see. I want to make sure, as a pet, that these animals are being taken care of as they should. Not just as an individual as mine, but as a pet species as a whole, I want to make sure these animals are being taken care of right. And if my example can help that, then I'm all for it. So if any time, if you guys want to, if that's part of it and seeing their habitat, I'm open for that as well. well. And, I, and I know, and it also, I mean, I, it's obvious how, how much you are willing to go through to be able to have your animals in the city of Safford, knowing that you're going to have to rezone your property if we approve this as well. And that means, as a pet owner, that means a lot to me as well. So I just want to say that publicly. Thank you. Okay. Hey, uh, Susan, you had the chart up on the wall, the different cities and what they allowed and didn't. Can we put that back up? Um, oh, okay, yes. 
other jurisdictions that you yes. were looking at? Yeah. Okay, I'd be happy to do that. I, I do have another question while she's doing that. How big of an area do you have for your pigs right now? Um, Just a guesstimate. I mean, I don't yeah, need an example. I'm not quite sure. I would say. Um, I'm not good with square footage and stuff, but um, in my backyard, it's a, a decent sized square, I'd say, uh, probably from me to the wall over there, it's a pretty decent length. Um, what we've done is we have a shed that was already there when we moved in, and so on one side we have like a square and then it goes behind the shed and then like a long area. So rather than taking up the whole yard, we kind of made like a run. Like, a, like a dog run. Yeah, a, a real similar to a dog run. That way they have all the space they need. We have the ability, we can let them out into the backyard if we want and then put them away if necessary because a lot of times they take care of the leaves and the weeds and all that good stuff in the yard for us as well. Um, so we can let them out and then put them back in. Um, they have their hut, their own uh, home area. Um, they have their little water hole area. It's designed just like any other home would be. They have their sections for everything. It's got a nice long area for everything they need, and then we can let them out for more exercise and things like that. Thank you. Thank you. I hate to drag this out, but I'm beginning to wonder maybe if this shouldn't be looked at a little more and brought back when we've got a, a full commission sitting up here. That's just my thoughts. but. If somebody wants to do something with motions or whatever, we can do that too. Comments, questions? I, c I can't motion. I, okay. I, I, don't, I, yeah. I, I, I kind of agree with you. Yeah. So, yeah, I think, I think a lot of us are kind of like, okay, what? And we may end up at your house knocking and looking. No, at please do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we want we want to do what's right. And uh, I, I appreciate your enthusiasm. But, and I, uh, I, just, unless, I kind of feel like some people would think... Uh, when you think of a uh, pig farm or hog farm or whatever, you, uh, I think there's kind of a mindset that there may be some odors or some smells or yeah. some things if it's a closed in area and, and you know, your next door neighbors right next to you, uh, are there some guidelines that are out there um, that should be out there that say, you have to clean up this. Yeah. That's, certain way or I, I don't know right. I, I, I if you're in an agricultural area and have cattle like I've always had well and, and, and initially and initially I was I was ready to say we should make it um, you know we should do Vietnamese pot belly pigs in the AR residential district I would be okay with that but I also with your presentation saying that your recommendation would be for the CMH so that the so that Ms. Brugner would be able to rezone her property and be able to stay at her current location. That's that's kind of where my hang up is right now. I'd like to see it to be able to get a better feel for the location. I'm thinking if we go to a vote, it might not pass now. So I guess if in lieu of a, uh, of a motion, we could uh, ask the director maybe if they could uh, can maybe bring this back at another date, give, give the commission an opportunity to uh, maybe visit your your location and uh, and see that Susan question comment yeah I, I would recommend that you because this is a public hearing that you continue the item okay. um, to the next the next planned um, planning and zoning commission meeting so we don't have to re-advertise okay so we can certainly do that um, right now it gets really tricky this time of year with vacations and people being sick yes. and things like that but you could certainly you know you can continue an item and continue an item and continue an item and yes that, and that certainly works yeah, yes I'd just like to say I, I feel like I can sense that we're all on the same page as far as having a lot of trust in this lady yes. here but what I, I think we're also kind of hung up on is we're passing this for the future of the yeah. city of Safford and, and are recommending that it be passed that way. And so we want to make sure that we're doing it right for the city. Uh, but on the other hand, we don't want to hurt you either. Right. And, and I we, we share yeah. or appreciate your love and, and interest in your, your pigs. And I the same way because this goes 
both ways. Um, you know, we are a part of the community. This is the city that we, you know, all can uh, shop at. We all move around. We're all part of the same community, so we do all need to be on the same page, and that's why one of my biggest thing is education. Um, and I know things like this can take time, and that way if we, the more time we need to make sure we've got the facts right, you know, I'm for that. Like I said, you guys are more than welcome to come by my house. Any question that I can answer, I'm willing to. And even be open for questions in the future for references if an issue does come up with a, a pot belly pig. I want to make sure not just mine, but all pot belly pigs of Safford are taken care of correctly. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. that attitude. Uh, so Susan, maybe uh, if I can get a consensus here, then we can just uh, bring this back. Is, will that handle it, or do you need a motion, or how do we want to do this? I, I, you could do a motion to continue this item to the next planning and zoning, in the next scheduled planning and zoning commission meeting, and then vote on it. I'll, I'll motion it. I'll make a motion that we second, continue vote. this the this item to the next scheduled planning and zoning commission hearing meeting. Second. Okay. And Mr. Hancock seconds. Okay, discussion. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you, everyone. Aye. Appreciate it. All righty. Oh. 17 project updates and announcements. I don't have anything um, specific. Uh, let's see, we know a lot of events have been canceled, our Christmas events have yeah. been canceled, you know, the light parade and then our movie night, and we had the tree lighting the other night, um, getting by as best as we can. Um, that's all I have for updates. Okay. We have 18. Call to the public on non-agenda not agenda items. See All right. Well, thank you, ladies, for coming. And then um, 19. So the next scheduled meeting would be de uh, de December 21st. And given that that's Christmas week, I don't know if we will have a quorum or not. Do, do we have um, of the four people that are here? Would they be available for that week? I probably will be available, but. Things do change, yeah. so. As of right now, I'm available. Jennifer may have to keep tags on us. John, how about you? Guys, I'll probably, probably be here in town. Yeah. Okay. Well, it doesn't matter. I so we've got four. Okay. It doesn't okay. matter to me. That's fine. All right. Uh, um, part of that is I'm getting ready to um, put an ad in the paper for another text amendment. And so I will, uh, that ad is due tomorrow by 10 a.m. And so if I've got some feel that we would have a quorum, then I can go ahead and move forward with that ad by tomorrow I think, morning. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think, if, I think I everyone think here I would feel comfortable agrees, yeah. saying okay. that we would. Okay. All right. So then also at that meeting, then we'll continue the item of discussion of the pot belly pigs, and then I'll have this other text amendment for you. Awesome. All right. Yes, question. One question. On the pot belly pig issue, uh, is there anybody uh, like the animal control officer? Or is there anybody that we could suggest uh, give us some information concerning that, or if they're aware of the do's and don'ts, or yays and nays, or areas yeah. that would be appropriate and other maybe inappropriate? I I, I requested that the that our animal control officer be here tonight. Unfortunately, he got called to go to Tucson, uh, so he was maybe unable. he'll be back by. Maybe he could yeah. be available on the twenty first. Does that make sense? Yeah. I, any I mean, I'd like to be more yeah. informed. I mean, I just yeah. I, like like Mr. Hancock said, we're making a decision for the the rest of but, the future of yeah. this in the city, and I just want to make sure I've got right all the information time. that yeah. I and, can get. And like I said, I I know where I live, right there next to. Funeral home and right along the highway, and I've had bramers and <laughs> lots of cattle and things in there, and so I think if uh, if it's appropriate and it's an agricultural area and they've been there forever before I got there, that people were able to do that. But if, if and my neighbors have horses and cattle and things of that nature, so if if there is the right way to do it, I would like to know what that is. 
or and, a, a right way. And you know, and from staff's perspective, I mean, we have dogs that are licensed in the city, and their problems. Yeah. You know, their problems with not being picked up after um, too many animals, um, odor, things like exactly. that. So, I mean, you're going to have the same thing with pot belly pigs too. You may have some owners that are really good at taking care of them, and others that are are not. Um, I think it's important that they be licensed. I agree. So that we know where they they're located yeah. um, and it helps with animal control and that license happens on a yearly basis. And then and that agree. licensing would also, you know, then have the requirement that you have to show paperwork showing that they are spayed or neutered. Um, the way this was written is that they need to be both male or female. The males need to be neutered and the females need to be spayed and there needs to be um, some kind of proof of that. Additional research that I have, and Ms. Bruckner would probably understand this too, is that there, you know, there's a sanctuary I think south of Tucson that has 600 pot belly pigs. I think people get them when they're small and they're cute and adorable, and then they get big, and then you know, people don't know what to do with them. So that's another issue that just happens. Um, that's why the one thing is um, spay and neutering, not allowing breeding in town i don't know what your insight is as far as um how popular they still are or if that was you know something that they were real popular for a short period of time and are no longer uh, no they're actually still coming up all the time um there's still debates today about the pot belly pig um being the teacup or even the farm hog the biggest one is actually a teacup pig where they think they're going to stay smaller than what they are and usually that's based on uh, bad breeders. They yep. do that as a ploy to sell the pig small, saying that they're gonna stay this size. Um, most of the time it's also done by eel feeding. Um, these are the same kind of issues that I hope to address um, with this, because if it's deemed a pet, then uh, eel breeders and stuff, there'll be certain guidelines just as much as pet breeders. Um, and things like that, they'll have to start taking care of the animals with the proper, uh, the proper facts. Um, I don't want to see little animals go unhealthy or be mistreated just because the knowledge in which the owner has been given is incorrect. And they, because they don't want to harm their animal any more than we do, but based on um, bad knowledge can also be bad results. So I want to make sure um, if we, if we do have them as a pet, we can make sure that the pet owner knows, again, what they're getting into, just like anything, they, you know, they have the guidelines, they have the recommendations there to learn from. If they don't, then that's more on yeah. them as an owner than the animal itself. I think, I think the commission just needs more time to, to feel like they have, they know everything that there is to know out there. You know, I don't think that's an area of expertise for, for many of us. So we want to be sure that we're getting all the facts that we can get and then uh, make a good decision. And we appreciate your time and patience with us. <laughs> no, and I vice versa, because I understand this isn't the usual concept. It's new. It's, you know, there's a lot of things going on new this, this year. So um, with this being one of it, it, just with it being new, I want to make sure, like you guys said, we have all the facts right. Because it's not just us that's going to be being based off of these facts, it's our community. Yep. Uh -huh. And so as a community, as a whole, I want to make sure, you know, I can help out in any way as All possible. Right. Thank you so much. Anything else for the further? The only, for the the only other thing that I would add is I just think that what we've already received is good. Yeah. Yes, as far I agree. As the spade and yeah. neutered, and let's keep that there. And also, I think two's enough. That's yeah. just my opinion, but I like that what you have prepared for us and so that's a good starting point to All right. the future. Thank you so much. Are we ready for a adjournment? Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Okay. Second. Alright. All those in favor? Alright. All right. Say aye, John. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Alright.